Hey folks, Jared Crash here. Welcome to Snapcast Episode 9. Today we're going to be covering Antivirus by myself, Jared Crash. I'm joined today by three other fantastic Snap Map authors. First up, we got Quantum Affected 99, author of the Doom Snap Map, Doom Eternal Burning Earth. Quantum, how's it going, man? Thanks for being here. Oh, it's nice to be here. Things are going pretty good. Awesome. We also got the author of Psycho Crash 88, a new map just came out by Joe Zombies 115. How's it going, Joe Zombies? Glad you could be here. Doing great. Uh, good to finally talk to you outside of just the comment section. It's a pleasure. Also, we got the uh, author of one of our Snapcast featured maps, Golgotha. Uh, that would be the author known as Spindleshanks. How's it going, Spindleshanks? Going good. Good to be here. Hope you're all having a good Sunday also. Certainly. Well, thank you all for being here. And uh, are we about ready to do the old countdown and play? All right, let's, uh, if everybody's ready, we'll do the, uh, the old countdown here. So three, two, one, play. And this is just me going through my, uh, my typical <laughs> menu screens here. So you can see the, uh, some of the maps that I've made, um, I know it comes across a little bit self-indulgent to be covering one of my own maps, but uh, you know people did recommend this, so <laughs> blame them, I guess. You gotta do it, man. Come on, I mean, self-indulgent or not, I mean, it's, a, it's not even self-indulgent. It's a good map. It probably should be showcased. That. Map because it's like you know it has to be. Oh, thank you. I appreciate that. You know, this map almost never got made because uh, I actually started it back in like late 2017, I want to say. And then uh, I experienced uh, the PlayStation uh, publishing bug. So I thought that I would never be able to publish the map. And I didn't want to get too far into it because after a certain point, you, you can't publish with that bug. So I started this map and then I never got to finish it until several like almost a year later when I actually finished building it on my Xbox when I got a copy for the Xbox. Thank God you were able to finish it because I mean it would have been I mean a shame to just actually like not have played this so thank God for that. I also had a similar publishing bug on my PC but I mean once I change computers it seems to be fine. Yeah, you definitely have to make a lot of backups these days for the maps. Yeah, it's such a shame with that publishing bug, because, I mean, I so many good authors were out there on PS4, and they just kind of got demoralized, you know, like Taylor Head for one. Such a shame. He had a, a nice sequel to Eye of Horus lined up, too, but just a, just that bug, man. Yeah, I know. I saw one of the videos he put out um, for the sequel, and it's like... It's just, yeah, I feel the same way. Like, there was just probably so much other things we could have been playing, but, you know, they never addressed it. So, I don't really want to spend all that time to actually make a map when they just can't publish it. All right, here we go. The helicopter intro. Take no prisoners, take no shit. Yeah, I found it. <laughs> And this is actually uh, based on a CH-47 Model D Chinook helicopter. You're a sick bastard, and I mean that in the most best way. I mean, this was just friggin' what an intro, man. This was like a great follow-up to the plane cycle. <laughs> yeah, thanks, man. I started out building this. Um, this is the first part of the map that I built, which is the helicopter. And then I sort of built the rest of the map around that. Yeah, I mean, just from this opening, I really didn't expect the map to go down how it did, like, later on, but, I mean, 
that just goes to show like it was only something unique and different to like look at this whole time. The intro was just, you know, it was like when you were into something special. And this is actually called a pinnacle landing when the uh, helicopter lands with only the aft two landing gear. It's a, it's a real maneuver that this aircraft can do. Yeah, your attention to detail there is just like absolutely mind. Yeah, believe it or not, uh, that a helicopter is pretty close to accurate. I mean, it's not perfect, but uh, um, I don't know if anybody knows this about me, but I used to be a uh, helicopter mechanic uh, in the army on this particular helicopter, which is, you know, part of why I think it, it looks so convincing is because I really did work on that helicopter in real life for a number of years. All right, it makes sense actually that you have like um, a certain like aesthetic when it comes to like military aircraft. Kind of, I mean, it, it says a lot now. Yeah, and there you could have seen on the uh, aft pylon there the PK one four one, a little uh, Easter egg for Psycho Knight one four one. I just love how you've got like the uh, this gigantic structure like so craftily built and everywhere you go in the map looking at the windows you can see other areas of this gigantic uh, building and it's like just also well thank you um yeah i really had a lot of fun building this uh aesthetically like the the premise of the map just gave me so much to work with just the whole um cyberpunk vibe of it it was a lot of fun to build I can actually tell you had fun building this. I mean, it really, it, it shows that, like, you really did have, like, a lot of fun. Not that I don't like Psychotron, love that map, too, but I just have a feeling, like, you really, I don't know, was just something about this where I, I could just picture you having a lot of fun. Oh, absolutely. Um, see, this map is actually pretty straightforward. I mean, as far as gameplay-wise, I'm not introducing any real unique mechanics to it. Uh, it's just it's just basically a, a place like a regular snap map. You just go shoot demons and progress to the next room, and uh, it's just run and gun. But you know, to make it uh, unique, I focused a lot on the on the visuals of it. That's that's I think where it kind of gets its own character. Yeah, it's also very interesting how the imps kind of come out of events in that room, and you can those kind of engineers come out of the shack. Oh yeah, that's something I do a lot in this map. Is just drop imps from from the ce from ceilings, from from vents. <laughs> I just love you know dropping imps on people. It, it happens a lot in this map. Also, there's a lot of secrets in this map. Like, I mean, I found secrets probably maybe on my even my fourth play where I was like, huh. I still came and find the path the way to get to the plasma rifle. That's a really well hidden one. Yeah, that one drove Rock Hard Gamer crazy. <laughs> He's, he spent so long trying to figure that one out. Um, and that's that's something I like about uh, the way the secrets are done. And it, it's not some, you know, this is something I got from the original Dooms, going all the way back to uh, that first level where you have the, you, you look through that window and you see the mega health. It just shows you that there's something there for you to try to get, but it's up to you to find out how to get it. And I think those are the best secrets where it, it teases you by letting you know that it's there, and then you th have to think about how you're going to get it the whole time you're playing. Definitely. I mean, there was a lot of visual cues for like a lot of secrets. I gotta say, I think every secret almost had some kind of a visual cue where if you look close enough, you could see maybe like an alcove or the actual item you need to get, where, you know, it, it really, you, know, you can tell like that there's there's just like so much to get in this that even after a couple of playthroughs, like I was saying, I was still finding it. Yeah, and it's a good thing you find them too because uh, this map's pretty damn hard and if you don't find some of the secrets, you're gonna have a tough time getting Yeah, it used to be a lot harder because I started out only giving the player five lives, but then I upped it to 10 because you know so many people just weren't even making it to the end. 
and still most people don't don't finish it. It's only got like a forty percent completion rate, I'd say. Love this room with like um, the vertical and the stairwell going up, and then those big doors that open on the other side. Love this room, even the pipes in the ceiling. Like, there's just a lot going on in each room, and each room, like, it's like nothing is, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Nothing is really, like, useless in any of these rooms. Like, each room has a purpose, and it's got, like, a unique encounter. You use it for the battles, too. It's just, like, I mean, really, I don't, I, I'm thinking that you really thought out each room in, like, a lot of depth before you just, like, made it. Yeah, and uh, each room has its own kind of unique visual aesthetic, which I I've heard some I've heard uh, uh, Forrest Williams does some good commentary, and he said that this area looks really grungy, whereas the rest of uh, the lab looks very techno, and that while they look nice, they they do clash visually, uh, which is understandable. But I was just having so much fun, just just go into town on all these different designs i didn't i didn't care if they clashed or not i was just having too much fun making them yeah, I would say visually if i was gonna say i mean that room like reminded me a lot of like quake 2 and then you have this area where it's like more high tech with all the decals and the lights so i can see that grunginess but even though they do clash i guess you can say that i think that it all works well together visually because you're not always seeing the same thing and I think I said this in another video where, like, some metrics sometimes just after a while it really like starts grading on you. This is like, it's got like different types of height, depth, symmetry. It just it's got a lot going. On. And if anybody wonders what's happening here, I, I had to change the batteries in my controller, but uh, don't don't worry, it, everything's okay. Yeah, I was hoping like I thought for a second maybe I got booted offline. And I was like, am I just talking into nothing? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's fine. I have my batteries in a drawer right next to me, so it only took a second. But uh, yeah, this is how you know it's uh, <laughs> we're all good. That's um, that's actually one thing. Like when I make maps, because I I play on PC and you know usually mouse and keyboard. But honestly, every time I make a map, I do have my controller handy because I realize the majority of people that do play play on the console. So sometimes you know I notice. That sometimes when people make maps, like you could tell that they made it with like a mouse and a keyboard in mind, and after a while playing with a controller, it's like, oh my god. Where I tend to try to see if like if I can beat it with a controller, then I figure another person can, because I'm not really the best player. So that's I figure you know that's sort of I mean like a way you should like make maps maybe with in mind with how other people maybe play with their controllers. Yeah, that really uh, that really comes into play when you're using custom mechanics and you're trying to do button mapping, uh, be because like I've heard a lot of people complain about like say for example on Psychotron they don't know how to do the airstrikes because I just said like you press the left thumbstick button and most people on on PC don't have a thumbstick button so they're like ah I don't know what to do. <laughs> Yeah, for that one, I was like, all right, let me just put my controller in and then figure it out, and then I was like, all right, I got it. I've always found an issue with that sort of translating, because you, know, you only have so much uh, space in the in the text to give to, to the player, and you can't always say, you know, X on Xbox, we're on PlayStation. Yeah, exactly. Most people, you know, they just want to play it. They don't want to, like, read for hours all the instructions or have, like, a big manual, you know? So, like, the less you probably do, in some ways, the better. And this secret's uh, quite a quite a parkour to get to, but uh, this was done... Uh... It's also the best secret, man. <laughs> yeah, because it's the, the spindle shanks. <laughs> <laughs> That's a pretty good one. Almost looked like it froze there for a second, too. Some nice sound effects on the spider, by the way. Thanks, I had a lot of fun putting those in. <laughs> you know, I had a whole uh, story line for this 
uh, for this map, uh, this is actually supposed to be a story-based, story-driven map, but a lot of that story kind of got yanked out at the last minute because I didn't have enough memory to really deliver it. But uh, there's a whole backstory to that spindle shanks uh, spider being there. It basically had to do with uh, one of the employees that worked at this this lab worked at a former company where they made animatronic animals like like robotic dogs and cats and uh he made this robotic spider but it didn't sell well so they they had to scrap that program yeah spiders especially spiders with that damn name spindle shanks probably wouldn't be a big seller i can see that <laughs> that was the best secret by the way that chemical room that was my favorite room of one In a way, I'm kind of glad that there's no story because, you know, the visual storytelling just could make you use your own imagination as you're playing it, which I did. You know, like, honestly, like, especially once you start getting into the computer, like, for me at least, it had like a Tron type like vibe, like you get sucked into the machine. Even how the antivirus looked, it reminded me of like the master control program from Tron. Like, it really, uh, you know, where I guess if you put the story, you know, then, I mean, it wouldn't be bad, I'm betting, because, you know, the map itself is great, so the story is probably going to be great, but, you know, being that I made up my own story as I was playing it, I, you know, I kind of appreciate that, especially with so much visual storytelling in this. Yeah, that's kind of always my feeling with, with most maps, is uh, you, no, one's, no one plays Doom because they want to read walls of text, you know? Uh, if you're going to do storytelling, it's best to kind of let the, let the setting and the scenery do the storytelling for you. Exactly. I find that a lot of the visuals in the map start out looking kind of, it kind of reminds me of, of Star Wars, like Empire Strikes Back, where you see kind of the tunnels and the lights in them, and then even the grungy areas, you know, like there's the grungy areas in there too, and then it kind of shifts into Tron. Yeah, I took a lot of inspiration from just everywhere. Star Wars, a lot from Halo as well. Uh, some of these hallways were kind of inspired by like Halo CE, which I was a huge fan of. But uh, yeah, and obviously Tron just maybe basically just put all those things into a blender and uh, had fun. Well, yeah, there's a lot of inspiration to be taken from this map with all the visual effects. There's, you know, this give a lot of authors out there some pretty good ideas what they can do and what can be done in Snap Map, right? With all the lighting and the decals and everything. Taking advantage of that shiny floor too, which you know, actually, you know, instead of like doubling decals, maybe having like a very complex floor, all you need is that blanket shine and. You're able to take advantage of all the decals on top with the shine, which you know actually adds to the room. I think so much. Yeah, that's a good point. Is um, and and I wasn't even thinking that way when I did it. I just thought it looked cool. But yeah, I mean, with the with that mirroring effect of the floor, you're basically doubling your uh, your your blocking volumes and your decals with that effect, and you're not even having to spend the resources to do you it. You consciously maybe you didn't realize you were doing that, like on a subconscious level where like the art like just flows through you or like you know whatever you do with like design like i'm thinking that you know it was there you know with everything like piling on especially like you know resources how to manage everything like you know putting that shiny floor you knew that it would look probably better and you know i mean it adds its own detail to the floor and due to the fact that you have like a lot of refraction going on it really you know it it adds, and it's also a lot less resources too. Yeah, that was a that was a big focus for me building this map. Is I I knew it was going to be a really big map, so I I had to try to minimize my resources at, at every point. So a lot of these rooms, even though they look like they have a lot of stuff in them, if you actually broke down how many actual decals and blocking volumes they have, it's they're really actually very minimal. You use your lighting, you use your placement, you use like your decals. If you use them all right, I, 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 I like notice, especially in this map, I mean, it seems like there's so much more than there actually is. 
which, you know, sometimes you'll play a map and it's got so much stuff in it when it doesn't need all the stuff or when a little bit of good place dark areas, a little bit of good lighting, it goes... Yeah, that's a good point. Um, it, as much as it's good to uh, put a lot of detail into your map, at a certain point, you're you're you hit a you hit a, a a point of diminishing returns where you can you can add a lot more detail, but if the player doesn't see it, you're not getting a lot of bang for your buck, resource wise. Exactly, I've gotten stuck into that trap before. Like my earlier maps, actually, where I was just really focused on detail. And then you run into the problem like, well, oh shit, I need to have like a battle going on here. And I don't want to shoehorn it in. You know, that's why like a room and a fight, you should probably like, I guess, think together how can they work instead of just, well, look, a pretty room. And then, you know, like there's maybe like a shitty battle in it or something like that. So, you know, everything's got to kind of go together with the resources that you're allowed as well. So, you know, thank God for the network where you can get rid of that in single player at least because I think that helped out immensely. Like this map, wouldn't have been possible if the network limit was still there. Like, a lot of maps I see wouldn't be possible right now. Yeah, that's true. But believe it or not, I, dev I never disabled the network limit for this map because my original intention was to have it be a multiplayer map. But unfortunately, I... It, it, because you of shit, man. There's, still, there, there's actually a network limit on this? Yeah, there, there is. Holy balls. I, that makes this fucking even more freaking impressive. Sorry for all the bad words, but... <laughs> I hear you, man. I just wish I could have gotten the multiplayer working. Uh, I think it, what it is, is I have one, uh, that shotgun that I find by the spindle shanks uh, spider secret. It doesn't have bob and rotate enabled, so when you do that, I think it automatically disables multiplayer. There's some kind of a weird bug where, where that can happen. Yeah, I remember actually like um, a while ago, people were like complaining about that. Never made multiplayer maps, but like other people that would. And the thing is like, I, I think when you set it, it like screws the map up like for good, even if you were like reverted. Yeah, and I, I didn't want to, at this point I had already put too much time into this map with getting the helicopter built. I didn't, I didn't want to start from scratch just to enable the multiplayer. So I just had to live with it, I guess, you know. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it was a wise decision. This really came out to be a great single-player map, you know? I mean, it would have been fun multiplayer also, but... And then you gotta also take into account that, like, a lot of people, I'm guessing, don't play Snap Map multiplayer or, like, co-op. I'm sure some do, but, you know, if you got a solid single-player, you're gonna get a lot more plays, you're gonna get a lot more mileage for your work. Yeah, that's true. I mean, co-op is definitely dead in the water when it comes to Snap Map. It's also very hard to test for when you don't have anyone except for yourself to sort of test on the map. You know, you can't really test with two players. You kind of just have to guess. Yeah, and and if you do test, like I always felt like a jerk trying to like drag people into a into testing the co-op because you know half the time if the map just crashes on them, then you just wasted all their time, and you know who wants to play a broken map? Yeah, I've done, I've done that before actually. Where you load up a popular map and then you quickly switch it to your own just to test it, it's very douchious. Oh, that's that's even more devious than what I was doing. I was just waiting for people to join in, but uh, yeah, I, I don't I don't like doing that. But probably just another reason why there's not a lot of co-op anymore. And I and I really enjoy this uh, scene where you drop the bridge goes out and you drop down into the pit. Not a lot of fun putting that together. It, it always disorients people too, because they, they're like, what's going on? And they just drop into the pit. Yeah, this section had me cursing a couple of times, because it was like, I was like, nilly willy just shooting barrels in my face, and they were just like, bashing into me, and I was like, damn. Now this scene, I took a lot of inspiration from uh, I.F. Horus, because th the way this scene plays out, it really feels like an I.F. Horus sit, uh, something that you do where just walls open up and then specters run at you pinkies and mancubus it you, you can a lot of this map I, I really did draw a lot of inspiration from other authors in various ways i just wish it looked up a little bit more in this playthrough because there's like a lot of like scenery to like gawk at as well 
But I think it was like you were saying before, you do so much like artwork in a level and people are just gonna like breeze by it. But honestly, like when I play, like I play first time usually to actually play it and then I'll go back and I'll download it and I'll just play it and just like start looking at every little crack and crevice just to like really appreciate like all the artwork that like authors put into their maps. I gotta say like now, I usually play offline a lot more than I do online just so I could like, you know, like look at all like the work that they put in and even look at it through the editor. Ah, I see you looking up right now, very good. Yeah. Bad water is also very interesting. It's very, you know, it, it's sort of restricts your movement a little. It seems like if you move slow in the water, it's kind of horrifying. Believe it or not, I didn't. Uh, I didn't set it up so that you're any slower. I, that might just be your mind playing tricks on you, to be honest. But yeah, it does kind of, in a way, you, you you feel like you're moving slower, even though you're not. Um, but no, that's actually supposed to be coolant. Um, but it doesn't matter. Um, I just wish you could have got that big fan rotating. I'm just saying why you didn't. Uh, it's not a big deal, but man, if that fan rotated, I would have been like freaking sweet. Oh yeah, if I if I would have disabled the network too, like that's just one of those things where I, I just didn't want to spend the resources. But especially if I put micro timers in there, man, that'd be a yeah, a nice little detail. Yeah, that's my downfall. See, I would have been like, I have to make that fan move, and then I would have had to sacrifice something else later on because I had to make that fan move. So probably better that you didn't, but. I mean, it's, it's great that it's there, you know, it's there, you know, in my head, it's like, oh, you know, the power is just all there because the virus is like sucking the fan power out or something. But I mean, you know, great freaking fan though. Yeah, part of the, uh, talking about the, the setting, telling the story of the map, uh, that pit is supposed to be full of coolant. And this whole room is kind of just like one big computer. Like, you know how with your, your computer tower, you've got fans that keep everything cool. Well, this is just one big computer that you're about to walk into, so that coolant kind of just keeps it all, uh, you know, from melting, and those fans just sort of would circulate air through that room. So just imagine this whole room is just being one giant computer, basically. Kind of what I was like, also like thinking as I was like playing it, you know, like when I like what I said when I first started the map with the helicopter and everything, I was like, you know, military base. Then I went inside, and it's like all glowing and like, you know, cool looking. So I was like, all right, this is weird. And then by this time, I was like, you know, it's like I'm getting deeper and deeper into the computer. And but then you like literally go in the program. So it's just like you go deeper and deeper. And as you do that too, like the setting changes and it just gives you always something good to look at. And that's something I did notice when I was in this room. I'm like, this is like a giant PC tower. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And funny thing about that secret I just found, um, believe it or not, I actually forgot that I had put it there. See, when I was building this map, I just put it on the on the windowsill there, just because like I just needed to put it somewhere, and I was gonna I was gonna find a better place to put it later. But then I completely forgot about it, so it made it to the final version of the game, and I didn't know it was there until until Terratella found it, and I was like, oh crap, I forgot I left that there. Yeah, he was the first one I saw that played this map and found that. Which is funny, because he found a secret that even the author forgot was in the map. <laughs> Just goes to show you how badass Terratella can be when it comes to playing this stuff. found a summer in Snap Map, right? Correct me. What's that? Oh, oh, he found the summoner? Uh, Taratella, he was the one that found the summoner in Snap Map, right? I'm not sure who did it. Um, it might have been him. I think he does have a map that has the summoner in it. Yeah, I'm pretty sure he was the first one to actually like, discover this. I mean, he didn't put it in there, but I think he discovered like it in a Snap Map, and he just, like I think, shared it in a map. And after that, I was like, holy shit, there's actually a summoner in yeah, that was pretty awesome. The only thing is the summoners can be kind of a, a handful when you go to use them. Like there's a part at the end of this map where I do use the summoners uh, when you're fighting the virus. And they're a little weird because they're always sort of 
when I go to teleport them, they'll sometimes they'll tell they won't teleport where they're supposed to go. They'll teleport out of the map, and sometimes they won't despawn when I command them to despawn. So there's a there's a bug where sometimes during the cutscene you can get killed by the summoners because they haven't despawned. It's rare, but it happens. Yeah, I noticed they do not respect the hero at all, no matter what. So you might as well just have a really open area when you use them, or try to make sure that they can like, you know, kind of be contained and not be like, like you said, in a cutscene or anything like that, because they're going to just like fuck a lot of shit. Yeah, well, that's what we get for, uh, you know, playing with the forbidden fruit of the summoners. You know, they weren't left into the into the game for a reason, I suppose. Well, it's better that they're in there now. It gives us something else to work with. I really like the yeah, This actually is a room that kind of gave me the inspiration for one of my maps. Uh, yeah, Planet of Zygons. I kind of get the same sort of idea. It doesn't look quite the same, but it definitely gave me some much. Yeah, as long as it gets the creative juices flowing, I mean, it doesn't have to be exactly the same, but if it inspires, like, something out of it, I mean, I can't even deny that this room, this whole map inspired me, like, a couple of maps also. So, like, I... And this is where we, this is the gateway where we pass into the virtual world. Yeah, that's yeah, it was not enough, actually. And then once I got here, I was like, oh my god, I'm in the fucking program. This is freaking great. I mean, there's one to kick, I think it was either this one or the, the next one that was like kicking my ass a little bit, which I didn't mind at all because I mean, you know, it just, it just, it's, it's good. That's what I mean, it's great act. Yeah, it reminded me more, more about like the Matrix with the Code Vision than Tron, surprisingly. Which is actually, I mean, that's a testament to this map. It's like any, like a bunch of different people can play it, and a bunch of different people like have different stories or different vibes. But also, I can see now, like I didn't even pick that up with the Matrix Code, like with all the green and everything like that. So you see, I mean, you learn a new thing every time. Like every time you see something like different. It's just amazing how how well visually the uh, the kind of vector design looks. Everything's so lined up absolutely perfectly. Everything is just so calc. Exactly. Yeah, a lot of um, the way I built this room is that I would a lot of these blocking volumes are sort of going into each other. Uh, so like I was actually able to save a lot of memory because no, every time you see a line, it's actually just one solid, uh, like those green, like those uh, pillars. It's basically um, <clears throat> it's basically only three blocking volumes, but I I fit them together in a way where it it looks like it's creating more than what's actually there, just a way to save memory. But it also makes it all look very even. Yeah, and this is like a room you kind of want things to kind of look even because it's sort of like, um, like, I, I mean, I wouldn't even know, like, they're not microchips, but like, you know, like a digital world. So, but I like also that, like, not everything is symmetrical as well. Like, you know, it's, even though it's an arena, it's still like, it's got things in the middle, you know, um, the things on the edges on the tops, so, but things are still like even, which is it's weird that it's not symmetrical, but still even. But, I mean, it's also a great use of resources as well, once again. Yeah, you know, normally normally I would criticize a room like this for being, you know, too boxy. Like, I don't know, I don't typically like it when authors build uh, custom geo rooms where they, they use up the entire grid room and they just make it one giant box. But I think in this, in this level here, that you can kind of get away with that because of the whole computer aesthetic. It... it, it it's a little bit more forgivable, I'd say, in this situation. Exactly. I mean, most people, when they do it, they try to make it like an organic-looking setting, like a castle or, 
you know, like or buildings and stuff like that, which is cool. I understand sometimes you gotta do what you gotta do, but I mean, for this, it just with the aesthetics, it fits with the aesthetics. So you know, I'm not, it's not like an eyesore at all. If anything, it actually all fits. It looks good that way, and you know, uh, it just it uh, with the I mean, the little steps going up like right now, it's, and it goes in with the battles as well too. You know, it you also it's not like just there for show. You got guys up there as well shooting at you, taking pot shots. So you know, everything kind of works in tandem together very well. And I always love situations where I can uh, punch a guy off of a ledge. It's just a, <laughs> a little thing that I love to put into any map whenever I can. There's the JMX 5000 Easter egg. Unfortunately, he couldn't make it today, but uh, there it is. He's there in microchips and spirit. <laughs> that's, that's right. I just love how you define these secrets and stuff. You have to walk along the, uh, the the circuits, and it's just like it's so you know such a cool con. Yeah, that was the fun part about building this map. Is you know I I really got to yeah some something like this. You know, you're not constrained by uh, reality in any way. Uh, something like this virtual world, you can really just sort of no rules apply as far as what visually needs to be there like it's just you let your imagination go crazy with some concept like a digital world you know so many options makes fun combat makes for like also a lot of secrets too Another thing I appreciated was how after a, after a while, if you're not finding the objective, well, uh, there would be a heads up display icon that, that would show you where to go. So POI, because with areas these days, it's very easy to get lost if, you know, if you're exploring for secrets for a bit. Yeah, and this, uh, and I guess even though this, this map does have a little bit of a story with, uh, you know, you and your antivirus. <laughs> yeah, um, you and your antivirus going through this digital world, resetting the drives. Um, it just kind of like moves the story along and, and kind of gives a, a purpose to all this combat that's happening. You know, you, your antivirus is trying to repair all the all the corruption in the on the computer, and you're there, sort of making his job easier, taking care of all these demons. You are Windows Defender, and that is Norton out there trying to get rid of all the corruption. Working together, trying to freaking make a con Yeah, it really gives you a sense that you're trying to, you know, work on this and, you know, get rid of this virus and, like, to have the, the Echo be your, like, sort of guide the whole time is just such a sci-fi, you know, Yeah, I, I just kind of wish I could have done, uh, kind of wish I could have spent more time developing the virtual world. It, it was kind of a hard call to make, like when I was designing this map. It's like, I, I want you to start out in the real world and then transition into a digital world. But at the same time, I was sort of splitting up my resources between the two. And... It, it was kind of a tough call to make because I, I kind of wish I would have had more of this digital world fleshed out, but then I wouldn't have had uh, the helicopter landing intro and all that uh, lab area, the Skylab area. So it's kind of hard to, to call it, you know. It, it almost makes me wish I'd have made a sequel, but, you know, it's just, it's just how it worked out, you know. 
I think you made the right call. I mean, it's very interesting how you start out in the real world and the contrast is very high when you get to the digital world. If you had just started in the digital area, then you know it wouldn't have seemed as uh, impactful when you first entered. Plus, I think it's a good length uh, digital world. I mean, I know you mean probably more exploration into this. Definitely would have been very fun. But then don't forget, it's also a boss map too, because you got the boss at the end, so that kind of makes up for it because it's got that crescendo. So, you know, even though I, I seem to be saying probably more would have definitely been fun, also fun for the eyes. You know, you did have the boss fight. You had two tough challenges for the, to like, um, set up with the antivirus, and then you had to actually fight the antivirus, which, you know, I think it was, you know, it was very well. It was well done. I mean, you could always do a sequel. I am not opposed to that at all. <laughs> if you want to do that, you can give us more of this. Yeah, um, there's always a possibility. I think I think I was just having so much fun, like I said, playing in on this, you know, with this as with this whole digital world aesthetic that I, you know, I just had so many different ideas for fun ways to play with it. Uh, I just didn't want to, just didn't want to end, you know. Yeah. Also, this is another reason why I do appreciate that it's like a very straightforward map with like not a lot of mechanics or even like, you know, it's, it's also linear in that aspect where you know where to go usually because I think, you know, any more might have just, I mean, like you said, it had the five lives and the ten lives, so that alone, not everyone's going to want to finish it. But I mean, if it was like any maybe convoluted or had like a lot of things going on, then maybe, you know. So I think even the kind of linear nature of it also works well with it, as you know, and it's got that boss at the end. So, you know, it's got like that cherry on top of the cake feeling as well. So I think, you know, everything kind of does fit very well together. And like I said before, and like you said, like you could tell that you had a lot of fun making it, which is also why like a lot of people had fun playing it. You know, if you have fun making something, that kind of shows through in the work. You know, it's not half assed it's full ass And people respect that, people like that, you know, and definitely shows through in the work. Yeah. Um... I, although I have to say, this map does come out a little bit on the long side. It's it's more like 45 minutes um, and upward, depending on how much time you want to spend looking for secrets. And normally I say that that's a little bit out of the Goldilocks zone for snap maps. I usually say you want to aim for like, you know, 15 to 30 minutes, generally speaking. So it is a little on the long side, but I think I I think I did a good enough job sort of mixing up the visuals enough to where at least that's keeping you engaged. So you, maybe you don't notice how long the map actually is. Exactly. And also, uh, you know, after a while sometimes, I mean, uh, me, I have no problems taking my time with maps, looking at everything. Like the first time I played this map, like I said, I, I took my sweet ass time. I just soaked it all in. I probably played this for like an hour and a half, two hours. Even after I was done with like the arena and the fights, like in certain areas, I was supposed to go over it for the secrets just to look at them like little nook and cranny and say, oh my God, how do you do this? Look at that damn fan, you know, the helicopter. Just the helicopter, I spent like maybe like, I don't know, 15, 20 minutes just looking at the whole thing. So, you know, but not everyone is me. And I got to understand that too when I'm making a map. I'm sure you had that in mind, you know, you got to kind of keep it flowing. So people will actually, you know, not just, not everyone's going to stay there forever. So, you know, that's understandable. I mean, I think I'm one of the players that tends to run through maps a little faster. I mean, even the helicopter I had to stop and go up at for a good, like, 45 seconds to a minute. It's kind of impossible not. Yeah. Well, I mean, just seeing that for the first time, I was like, of course he'd want off that fucking gym. Of course he would. Like, this thing's got moving propellers, people in there, the thing docks, it lands, you get out, it's like, it was just freaking amazing, it's still amazing. It's like one of the best objects I think still to this day I've seen in Snapmap. I mean, really, just, I mean, it looks, it, it's it's professional. With just um, blocking volumes and props, that thing just came out, like, really professional. I, I can't give enough praise. Thanks, man, I appreciate that. Uh definitely put a lot of time and effort into the look of it. 
trying yeah, to. Yeah, I tell. I want. I really wanted to make it as anatomically correct as I could, and I, I think I actually got pretty pretty close. You know, you, if you look close, you can even see like the high frequency antennas. You can see like sort of the curvature of the fuel cells, uh, the pedostatic tubes coming out the front. Just all the little details kind of sell it, I think. Yeah, I mean, and you're just like using words now that are like really flying over my head. So it just shows that you not only know the anatomy of the aircraft, which also I kind of had a feeling. I'm like, he has to be a pilot or something, not just an enthusiast, <laughs> especially at the first cycle trial. I was like, all right, you know, maybe he's an enthusiast. Then after that, I don't know why I never asked you before. I mean, I've always could have, but then I was like, yeah, he's like a pilot or something. And sure enough, you know, you were an engineer of these things. And it shows. I mean, every little detail in it is like, I would also think that you lived in a computer also after playing this as well, but I know that's not true. <laughs> Yeah, that's pretty funny. Now these caca demons can be a real pain in the ass. I know uh, FNSG just uploaded a video where one of these bastards went over the other side of the wall, and and that uh, that launch pad won't appear until you kill all of the monsters, all the demons in this area. So he literally had to parkour his way back out of this room and track down that son of a gun and shoot him in order to get to the next portion. So it's just, yeah, those floating caca demons can be a real pain in the ass. Yes, they can. Not only do they not respect the Geo as well, but I noticed like a couple of maps that I seen playthroughs that I did, I had to cut down on the cackles because for some reason, they like kill frame rate. Like, not on the PC. I mean, I don't really notice it, but then I see someone playing on a PS4 or an Xbox, and then all of a sudden, like, their FPS just tanks, and I'm like, oh, shit, I gotta, like, take those out. And, you know, that's when they're behaving, and they're not going through walls, and I'm like, oh, look, they're behaving, and then all of a sudden, I see somebody playing, and then it just tanks their, like, their frames, and I'm like, all right, let me take them out now, fuck. Which is a real shame, because they're actually one of my favorite demons just to, just to play with. They're really interesting, but, uh, yeah, they just... <laughs> Unless they're in a pre-made module, they just sort of bug everything up. Yeah, I mean, and you don't get a lot of aerial monsters in this. That's why, you know, they're kind of, like, useful. But I noticed, for me at least, like, any more... You got, like, a lot going on with Geo and like, decals and sound effects and all this, and then you stick, like, three cackles there, your map's going to be, like, choking. So I'm like, all right, let me put one or two. Even though you want to put, like, five and maybe an Ancubus, but, you know, you can't because you got... Like, everything's a balance with Snapmap, which is why I love it. Because, you know, if it was like unlimited everything and everything worked, I don't think we would be as creative as this. I mean, that's where I think a lot of the creativity comes from, is that we have to like sacrifice, and know where to put what, and how to use this, and how to, you know? So everything all together making a balance is what makes these maps, I think, you know, a lot of maps just like phenomenal. It's like, how to, and then you wonder, like, how does this person do this? You know, even though we make maps ourselves, still, like, we'll play a good map like this one and be like, how the hell do we do this? And then finding out that the network is in there still, you know, my jaw dropped before. I'm like, really? <laughs> I would never guess the network was what could actually be in this. I, I just, it boggles my mind. and really impressive. Yeah, that's the thing that um, I kind of love about all these snap maps is the fact that everyone does have the same tools to work with and the same amount of memory limitation. You know, everyone's got the same ca the same colors and the same canvas. It's just a matter of how they put it together and what they're able to do with it that really, really keeps these maps interesting. I I'm glad they never, um, as much as I might have liked it, I'm glad that they never actually sold, like, DLC for Snap Map just to, like, give some people more tools to work with than others. Um, as much as I like more stuff to work with, I mean, I, I do like the aspect that everyone just sort of has the same palette to work with. Yeah, I mean, if it's like having a box of crayons, you'll have a large group of people that will stop at them and be like, what the hell can I, you know, crayons, kids use crayons. But then you'll have very creative people sometimes to take those crayons and then apply them in ways that no one ever thought. And then they'll make something that, you know, people be like, you made this with crayons? And they're like, yeah, I made this with crayons. You know, 
it's kind of like that. Like I, I think you said the last time was Z-Man, like a Fisher Price development kit. You know, Fisher Price can toys, but if you put anything in the right hands or creative hands, you're going to get you know creative results all the time. And you might even be a little more creative for the simple fact that you have less to work with, so you really got to think outside the box. And I think it's funny. Uh, I think Quantum was the first person to point th- point out that that building I was in front of was actually based off of a movie theater. I just kind of used that design to <laughs> put it in there. God, I love these damn wires. It's not only do they look like good wires, also the detail on the wires. You know, that like a new map I'm actually working on. Like that's where I got my idea for like a lot of like the wires, the big wires too. I was like, oh my god, like I never. I didn't realize you could like make wires. You know, I knew you can, but like, I don't know, it just never dawned on me. And you know, I just saw it and I was like, you know, I didn't like rip them off completely or anything like that, but I was like, you can make like cool curved wires, you know, and that's just great. And I love to see flute like see through floor, it's it's arena, you know. I'm not really like I say, I'm not really one for symmetrical things, but if you're gonna do it, you know, do creative and this is really as creative as it gets. Yeah, with the wires, I actually got that from, um, I was inspired to do that by some of the geo that Count Lazuli was actually making for um, a collaboration map that him, JMX5000, and I were working on, Mephistus, uh, that never really got published. But uh, yeah, that, that kind of is where I got the inspiration to do the wires, is because he was actually using it to good effect in one of his levels. And I was like, damn, that's a nice effect with the, uh, with the bloom there on the, vo- on the blocking volumes. So that's kind of uh, where that came from. Yeah, so you know, some of this, I mean, um, and, but like certain maps I noticed that they'll go a little crazy with the bloom on the whole blocking volume, and it's like, you could have just used decals or, you know, put them in like certain good spots. But I noticed like all the bloom you use on like the blocking volumes, like you really, you know, you put them in the right spots and it's in such a spot where, it, you know, don't even look like, not that it don't look at, like it belongs there, but it looks like it's got more going than it actually does. You know, it's simple, but yet sometimes simple goes a long way. You know, less is more. Tron also, I don't know, but like that episode of South Park with Moses, so like every time I was like playing this, I was like, does this guy demand macaroni pictures? <laughs> I just freaking, I don't know, I just made him Yeah, you There's the matrix effect right there. <laughs> I wonder what that would look like with 3D glasses on. Cause you got all like the red and blue and green or whatever colors down. You probably look crazy. <laughs> it probably would actually work really good too. <laughs> When I got to this part, I was just laying into the virus the whole time while more summoners just kept on spawning. Definitely not a good idea. It just became too uh, chaotic. Yeah, you can focus on just unloading onto the virus, but uh, you run the risk of losing some lives. Where you, know, you could be like me and just like gawk at it and be like, oh my god, that looks so cool and get your ass But I mean, it does. I can't help it. I just had to like scare it for Yeah, I'm pretty sure you mentioned this before, but it's like that kind of like a sort of cat sort of face and it's just being like, it's toying with you and it's just trying to mess around. Yeah, that's actually not the original face that I designed for this. And uh, maybe I'll show it during uh, some of the still shots later, but... The original face was more of a human-looking face, uh, 
But what happened is when I was when I was testing it, I didn't have the draw distance on the decal set quite right, so half of the face kind of just disappeared, and what was left actually ended up looking like the face that you see now, just because a lot of the lines sort of disappeared with the draw distance. And then I was like, hey, that actually looks a lot better than what I'm doing. So I kind of just redesigned it to look like the way it looks now. All right, so I'm one of those Bob Ross happy accents. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's crazy how that works out sometimes. It's just like sometimes you just accidentally create something that's pure genius. I mean, like, obviously, um, this whole map is like, you know, just mind blowing. And then every time you, uh, you know, come across something, you're like, oh man, this is gonna look awesome. It just gives you such a good feeling that I can't wait this, to get this out there and have people have a look at this, you know? Yeah, but just imagine making this map and then not being able to publish it because of some weird bug. Yeah, that's happened before. I mean, actually worse, I don't know if anyone knows this, but sometimes if you put a blocking volume outside of the grid room, like, there's a chance your map could corrupt and lock up. And it's worse when you're, like, almost 80% done with your map, and then you can make backups like an idiot, and then the whole map is corrupt. It's like, you know, so many times, it's like, I'm never making another slam map again. And I was just like, you know what, screw it. Let me just not make mistakes, and let me just make backups at least. <laughs> have to fix that issue and we wouldn't have to deal with that anymore it's there's nothing worse than pouring your heart and soul into something and having you know not being able to publish it probably a reason why they're not having snap apples on blue turtle it's probably so much going on that they're like you know what it, it if they do eventually come out with modding tools it probably just be easier that way just to have like a tool set instead of like trying to integrate another snap map because that game, the more like I see like videos and stuff, there's a lot. Of there's like a lot of shit going on, so I couldn't even. Some, I mean, I can't imagine how if they took the time how they can do it on Snap Map, but I mean, I don't know. It would probably be a little like too much more money than they'd want to invest at this time. You know, thank God we still have the original Snap Map and then shut the service down. That's all I got to say. <laughs> yeah, that's. Yeah, that's true. Um, actually, I don't mind the fact that they're mostly just focusing on a single player campaign in eternal um i mean it looks fantastic as much as i wish there was snap map um you know i mean that's the direction they decided to take it so i just i'm gonna have to trust them on it yeah i mean you know it looks good you know i mean you know you first see the you know i, I look at the games and everything nowadays but like you know i never get myself excited for anything even like even though i love 2016 you know it's like we're making a sequel. All right, you know, let me wait. You know, now I'm getting a little more excited as it's coming closer. But I also agree. Like I understand where they're going. You know, at first I was butt hurt. I was like, no, it's not that. But you know what? I mean, the single player looks like it's going to hold me over for a while. And also, you know, I mean, that looks a little bit fun. I'm confused, but you never know. Yeah. Well, you also you also can't blame them. Uh, after the way people really dumped on Snap Map when it first released, I mean, not, I I know there's people like you and I that and others that saw the potential in it right away, and we were willing to sort of give it a chance and stick it out through all the the early bugs and updates. And uh, but there were a lot of people that they their first reaction, and it was mostly PC players who uh, were were sour that there were no modding tools that they went with the Snap Map instead. But they saw it and they. They really dumped on it hard, and it didn't help that a lot of the early maps that sort of got uh, used as examples of what Snap Map was all about were really kind of lame. So it just had a really bad start, and it, you know, first impressions being what they are, people just did not respond well to it. So I can understand them sort of dropping it for this. Yeah, I mean, but it's funny you say that because, like, one of the original snap mappers I remember playing their maps and um, they just like made everything out of props and I don't even remember the map but a couple of them was bloodshot I mean and he's also he's a PC mod so you know I mean 
it's like I was saying before, sometimes people see a box of crayons and they're just like, oh, crayons, you know, but you get a talented person, they'll make, they'll make, you know, art out of that with crayons, don't matter. So, but, you know, I get that also, you know, they're not going to make an investment you know, the snap map when there's like a very small community of people. So, you know, understood. Yeah, well, why don't we get back to uh, to wrapping up this map. Uh, Antivirus by JR Crash. <laughs> Myself. By you. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Quantum Affected. What do you think about Antivirus? What are your final thoughts about this map? Well, this map is just amazing. Like it was, pro it's probably honestly my one, if not my favorite, at least in my top two favorite maps, you know, of all time that I've played in Snap Map. Just visually and just you know, the, right from the start, the helicopter and everything. Um, this map literally put me in the hospital. I got so excited when I saw someone start uh, doing a playthrough, and, I, and then I couldn't play it for two days. I, I was just going crazy. <laughs> All right. Um, well, fortunately, you recovered from that, so <laughs> that's all good. Uh, Joe Zombies one fifteen. What do you think of antivirus? What are your final thoughts? Oh, it's fantastic. One of my favorite aspects of this map is how it's a whole huge building. And there's windows everywhere, so it, you kind of get the sense of structure, especially with that um, that one field drone with the lost souls, where you upgrade the shotgun. You can like look outside and see that you're actually in a, a you know, a back end part of this building. It's very intricately designed and you actually feel like it's a real place. Uh, Spindle Shanks, what do you think about antivirus? What are your final thoughts? Eh, it's kind of crappy, but you know, I mean, should be cool, like... Well, you can say well, anything I'm... on your last Snapcast, so... <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I was, you know, I, I'm sure someone out there could probably find a criticism, you know, uh, but that someone is not going to be me. I tried, I really did, but, uh, you know, like, everything from the combat to the aesthetics, to the pacing, to the sound, to the music, um, the secrets, um, the shout outs, I mean, everything was so meticulously, like, thought out, everything, even like you said, like, the battles on top where like you think it's cool for some guys to be kicked off so even took that into account like i can glory kill a motherfucker right off the roof <laughs> and i mean it's just like i said you can tell that there was like so much put into this not even just effort which there was a lot of effort but there was like passion behind the effort and it shows i mean i'm sure like i'm just reiterating what i said to this whole snapcast i like didn't shut the hell up the whole time i, I feel I mean, that's also because this is probably like, like, um, I mean, really, this is also probably like my top snap map, pretty much. I mean, I'm trying to think of like something, just a, something that like, I, there's nothing. I mean, everything that I find enjoyable in video games was done in the snap map. You know, like, I tend to be like less critical, like, about certain things. Maybe the Spider Mastermind, that first snap case we did, I was a little critical, like on certain areas. But, you know, like, but this is the actual first map, I gotta say. Like, I really don't see any problem. Maybe for my own, like, preference, but also I think even from, like, a game design, game design perspective, like, how everything just flows, everything looks, everything's utilized. I mean, from everything from under the hood and everything you play, I just think it's like phenomenal. Like, you know, like, I mean, I love Psychotron, but this just really, like, I think, like, for me, at least, like, just blew it out of the war in, like, every single way. It just, I mean, I just, I can't say enough praise. That's why I was, like, voted for this, like, the second, like, everyone was, like, this map, I was like, hell yeah, antivirus, like, must talk about this must keep talking about this for about now and hopefully I've talked about it and praise it enough. I mean, I just, I love it, man. It's just a great job. I, I can't tell you that enough. Thanks, man. I really appreciate it. Um, and I guess I'll give my final thoughts. Uh, yeah, this is a map that I really had a lot of fun making. And to me, this is like, again, I, I'm not trying to sound, uh, you know, 
sort of too self-congratulatory or self-indulgent or whatever. I, I understand this is my map that I'm talking about, but just sort of me just viewing this as any other map, I, I thought it, you know, it's, it's a fantastic example of what we, the kind of fun we can have with Doom Snap Map, just, uh, just visually for one thing, uh, you can really pursue a lot of, you know, fantastic, far out visual concepts with Snap Map. And this is a good example of that with the uh, the whole the whole Tron aesthetic really just sort of taken to the extreme. Um, and it's just one of the things that I love about Snap Map is just all all the fun visual aesthetic things you can do with it. And then this is just a good example of that. Um, like you said, Spindle Shanks, I, I you know all the things, the secrets. I I had a lot of fun with that and. Um, now there were some things I didn't like about this map. Uh, just being, you know, critical about it. Uh, it does border on being a little too long, and some people have complained about that. I tried to break it up with some varying types of combat and some different types of visual background, just so that it's not too grating. You know, it is a little on the long side. I understand it. It can it can start to feel like a little bit too much of an arena battle. In certain parts, when you're trying to take over the uh, the hard drive, but uh, some some hard criticisms I really have about this map is uh, that I really wanted to get multiplayer working and I couldn't make it happen. So I, I felt like a little bit of a failure because I uh, I I wasn't able to achieve what I set out to achieve in doing multiplayer. And there's also a couple of of pretty nasty bugs in this map. Like, uh, for example, the Caco Demons sort of, like you said, not respecting the Geo, going over a wall and then screwing over the player. Um, and, and if I was really wanted, if I really wanted to be on top of that, I could go back and edit the map so that you know maybe I put up an invisible wall or I set up like a timer system where if you don't kill the Caco Demons in a certain amount of time, they just automatically die. I, you know, there's things I could do to sort of try to smooth out those bugs. Also with the uh, summoners. Um, the summoners at the end there's a bug where they don't you can try to despawn them or remove them from the map but sometimes they just they just they just won't <laughs> I don't know if that's an issue with the way I, I programmed it or if it's an issue with the way the map the snap map is but there are some bugs where the the, the summoners can kill you during a cutscene and I can only imagine how frustrating that could be if you're on your last life and you get taken out in that kind of a way, you know, <laughs> that's something that would make you want to downvote the map almost out of frustration. Um, but really, I mean, other than the bugs, I don't have too many big issues with this map. Uh, yeah, I mean, this is this is this is probably the map I would say that I'm the most proud of, that I've really put a lot of time and effort into. I think that shows, and. I'm glad that people enjoy it, and I'm glad that people have such kind things to say about it. And I think it's a good example of just sort of the fun and interesting things you can do with Snap Map. So that's sort of my thought about it. You're here, man. I agree with you 100%. Well, everything but the criticisms. <laughs> I still think it was like perfect one, pretty much. All right. Well, uh, I think we'll go ahead and wrap it up here. So I want to thank everybody for joining me today. So uh, thanks, Quantum Affected. I'm glad you could be here. Yeah, it was it was a lot of fun. Thanks for uh, starting this whole Snapcast. Absolutely, it's always fun to hang out with you guys and just talk some Snap Map on a on a Sunday evening <laughs> or morning, depending on where you are. Uh, Joe Zombies one fifteen. Thank you very much for being here. I really appreciated it. Absolutely. I'd, I'd be willing to do this again sometime if uh, we're going to keep on going up. Yeah, you know, I every time I do one of these snapcasts, I always think, like, am I going to start it and just be here by myself? <laughs> I never know who's going to show up or not. So, And I always figure, like, you know, how is there still going to be... Uh, interest in doing this kind of thing especially with doom eternal coming out so i guess we'll just keep riding or just keep driving this car till the wheels fall off and i don't know we'll see what happens <laughs> i guess yeah sounds like a fun 
Uh, Spindle Shanks, thanks very much for being here, man. I really appreciated your commentary throughout this whole thing. You got it, man. Did not want to miss this one especially. And um, yeah, man, we'll keep riding these as long as it takes, man. Even if it's just got to be like, you know, one, two, three of us, I'm fine with that as long as you want. Yeah, I actually kind of like it when uh, we only have a handful of people because then everyone kind of gets their chance to speak if they want to. When we have like seven, eight, nine people in the chat at once, and then it becomes too much like a busy, you know, a CNN panel or something where everyone's just sort of shouting over each other to get two seconds in, and it gets a little bit annoying personally. But I kind of like this, you know, just a handful of people. So, but yeah, uh, thank you all for being here. Uh, really appreciate it. That was Antivirus by JR Crash. Uh, it's been out a couple of years now, but it uh, hasn't doesn't seem like it's aged today. You know, it still still looks beautiful, and uh, I'm really proud of the work I was able to do, and definitely pr happy I was able to publish it because there was a time where I wasn't sure I'd be able to. And um, that'll wrap up for Snapcast episode nine. Uh, thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. If you have a map you'd like to recommend, or if you want to become you know, if you want to join in on the next Snapcast episode, we do. There will be a link in the Discord. If you want to go ahead and join the Snapcast Discord, just go ahead and click that link. Otherwise, thanks for watching, thanks for listening, and until next time, peace out.